Welcome back <laughs> to the 17th episode of the Premium Advantage. 17! 17! Can man. you believe it? There you go. Congratulations. Time, I know, it's time flies when you're having fun, they say. It, it is, it is. And th things go one step at a time. There's continuity, so there's definitely making uh, things a lot more uh, fluid. Okay? So today we are here together at Bon Chon. It's a place where we're going to have an event this weekend. Uh, July 2nd is a uh, br brunch comedy showcase. Brunch comedy show. But we're also going to have musicians, so it's not just That's comedy right. this particular show. That's we're going to have a lot of shows coming up in the next few years, um, but this one's going to have also musicians. So mm. we're super excited. That's why we're doing our episode here today, so you can get an idea of what it looks like, how things go, how the food menu looks. We're going to have some of these food items come. Our friend here, what is your name, sir? Gabriel. Gabriel's here. Uh, he's one of the fantastic servers here at Bonchon, and he's going to take our order. Uh, and bring us some of the stuff that you can see at the comedy show this weekend. Oh yeah, we picked that out special just because of the speciality of the menu. Ah, and go. Uh, so, could you describe to us the Korean tacos? What are the Korean tacos? The Korean tacos, uh, they come in either spicy chicken or bulgogi. Mm, uh, what's bulgogi? It's bulgogi. marinated ribeye steak. Marinated that ribeye steak. Delicious. Sounds good. Mm, so yes, we got sir. chicken and we got uh, marinated bulgogi. ribeye. What about the bib map? What is that? The, the bibimbap. 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 Yep. It's part stir fry, part your choice. Oh, stir fry. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so okay. It's like it would be a hot pot, but it's on top of white rice. Oh, All right. right. Okay. What about? Oh, you got house fried rice. Okay, good with chicken and with uh oh bulgogi also spicy chicken. All right, see you guys are known for chicken. Bam. Known for chicken. There you go. Mark what about down. the chicken katsu? Tell us about the chicken katsu. The katsu it's breaded and fried. Fried chicken and oh, it's on top of white rice. On top of white rice? Okay. Yeah. Now always comes with like coleslaw and a special sauce. Oh man, coleslaw. Alright. Sounds reasonable, like a this reasonable mix. Japache? Japchai. Japchai. How do you say that? Ja, yeah, uh, Jap Chai. Jap Chai. We all said it wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it like a spatio. <laughs> yeah. Totally not right. So, <laughs> alright, go ahead, Jap Chai. What is that? It's, it always comes with a bulgogi and oh. it's served with unique glass noodles. And green greens. Unique glass noodles. I love it, man. I love this that. whole thing, this whole experience. Really good. Experience is about uniqueness. Yes. So I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And then we have at the bottom Korean fried chicken. Man, we got wings, drum, okay, and bowls and uh, combo. Okay. Do, have you guys looked at the menu? Are you guys interested in something already in particular? I like the glass noodles think sound, that sounds good. That does right. sound good. Toast. Toast. All right, cool. Uh, so we're gonna order the glass noodles. Uh, I like the bibimbap, the chicken. Yeah, okay. it's uh, soy garlic for spicy. Ooh. You know you want oh, I kind of do, but I'm kind of scared as to how spicy it's going to be. Uh, I'm, make, I'm, I'm, a, ter I'm, a, I'm a terrible camera. Mexican man. I, 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 that's <laughs> the one the thing. Camera. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Salsa, if you just get normal. Oh, man, this is going straight through. No edits. <laughs> oh, let's do that. Yeah, that's cool. And then also, yeah, so I had a question on the Korean tacos. Um, so Korean tacos or Korean fried chicken? So it's a little, little uh, chicken. What do, what do you guys think? Tacos or Korean fried chicken? Oh, it's like a chicken place. That's a tough one. I had the tacos last time. Uh, what, what, what? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, you had the tacos last time? I did, but I did, did, did the other one this time. The chickens, right? Yeah. The chicken. Let's do the chicken. One order of, uh, let's do the combo. Two wings and two drums. So, uh, soy garlic or spicy for the Korean tacos. Can we do, uh, we're gonna do the chicken, not the tacos. Not the tacos. We're gonna do the regular. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fried chicken. The fried yeah. chicken. The combo. Two wings and two drums. Okay. Is that cool? Okay. Cool. So, the small. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then, what flavor? Oh. Flavor? Yeah, yeah. What are the options? For the, so you're getting the small combo, yeah. right? So it's the wings and eggs. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then you could get it either soy garlic, uh, spicy, or plain. Uh, can we get mixed? Can we get mixed? I'll mix them up. Okay. So I'll do half and half. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. And then we also want the, uh, what's the, the drink thing called? Oh yeah, the flight. You guys have a frozen flight, right? Frozen flight. Yes, please. Yeah, awesome. one of those. Good. Yes. Right. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All, All right. right. Cool. So the food is coming and this is giving you a glimpse of what it's going to be looking like at our show on Saturday. Please yep. get your tickets ASAP. Yep. Um, limited seating. Yes, it is limited seating, um, but also it's going to sell out. Um, a lot of comedians say that at every show. Yep. They say, hey, get your tickets right away because it's going to sell out. Oh, and they don't mean it. But I really mean it this time. Like, yeah, seriously, yeah. get your tickets ASAP. Brunchcomedyshow.com. Yep. Having said that, what else do we have? Oh, presenting Miss oh. Melanie. The whole reason why we're here. It is, it is, it is the whole reason why we're here to yes. meet. Man, we have been trying to schedule this meeting for months. We have. 
months. Yeah. It's challenging. Everybody's busy. Yes. Things happen. Things come yes. up. You know what I mean? It's summertime. It's hot. summertime. People go out on vacation. Have you guys done any particular things that are special oh, over summertime? Cabo. Ooh, nice. We're in Cabo. What did you do in Cabo? We did a lot of beach stuff. We also went to the. Um, you they see your have tan. A, you got a good tan I going. I do have a good tan. <laughs> awesome. They have a, a place called Wild Adventures. It's like a. They do ATVs and ATVs. I went bungee oh, jumping. Oh, did have, you do ATVs and, and bungee jumping? Uh, bungee like, jumping into an ATV it's, it's, and, then, and then into a zip line. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude, it's like oh, Jumanji. What, 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 what is that? That's like fun. Oh man, yeah, can we get that here? Yeah. yeah. I like so the, wait, I like so it's a it's a park that you go to. And yeah, it's all so of you know, Cabo's kind of like that mountains on one side, beach on the other side. So in the that's mountains, right. they had that that's canyon right. mm. and or a canyon there, and gotcha. you can do all kinds of stuff in there. So they do a lot of. Um, you know the ATV cars, yeah. either on the beach. How far? That's better been, though because like a lot of times you go on these beach vacations or these exotic vacations, and you're yeah. like, okay, we gotta do this, and then this at this time, and then that at this. Oh, but yeah. if it's all in one place. Oh yeah, that's, that's awesome. what I like. You set up your schedule. Hey, give me the ATVs. Give I'm me the this. this. Give me the wild horses. And it's all one give me the back you, you pay one ticket <laughs> to get in, and it's you, you can do everything. How far? I like that. Okay. That's it. Like, on the water swimming and all that good stuff also in there? Yeah. Oh, no yeah. kidding. So well, I was actually a, throwing it in. I was assuming there was, he was going to say no. What's the arch thing? It, it's, a, it's one of the famous landmarks. It's like um, it's a big stone, like a big rock out okay. in the middle of the water, and it has a like a natural arch in it. Um, so you can take a boat right out there. That A lot cool. of people do glass bottom boats or a clear boat type oh. of thing and um, go and see the water. It's beautiful out there. Yeah. Man. So you guys want the sultry fly, not the frozen fly? The frozen fly. Yeah. The frozen fly, right? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it, my man. Appreciate it. Awesome service here. That's the supervisor. Awesome service. He's, he's, he's an amazing guy. We're, 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 we're so lucky. He already to have knows him. your order. He's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. so like uh, premium advantage. Your usual table. Your usual drinks, guys. <laughs> yeah. We're famous around here. <laughs> now, we did, we did kind of a little bit of surprise him uh, with regards to the offers, and we, we kind of, you know, yeah. provide him a different angle. Yeah. We got to see. All good. Cool. Yes. So now. Here to introduce you, to talk a little bit about you, to get to know you more, better, because we don't really all know each other that well. Right. So it takes a little bit of uh, coordination so you can have some of that time, but then on top of that, we're trying to uh, gather a little bit of extra content so that we can share with the audience so that we don't have to re-repeat the information all over again about exactly. who we are, about what we're trying to accomplish, how we handle things, and things of that nature. Here, we're looking for professionals. Tell us a little bit about your profession, your professionalism, your company. All about Basically. me. Okay, so my I mean, name's our name. Yep, Let's go. start with that. So my name is Doctora Melanie Rodriguez. Doctora. Doctora. Let's not forget that. Uh, you know, <laughs> with an a, I say that. A. Um, <laughs> it, it was his always been really hard to accept that whole like take yeah. on the title because being I, Latina, it is a you know that humility piece is, sure. comes in and it's like yes I did this but for a while it took I never said it. Ah, so I do now. That's interesting. I have a question. Yes. And the way that you mention your name, which is Doctor, right? And you mention you put the A in there, I do. which is the like the Hispanic Latin way of doing it. But I, you, I assume you do it specifically so people can, when they read it, just a woman. Yes. Yes. Because if you put it in English, it's still Doctor, yeah. so, so there could be a. a I see. That's I interesting. Do. So it, it brings in kind of both of those elements. My so what I do is I do leadership coaching for women of color in corporate America, right? So leadership I work coaching. with people who are in uh, mid to senior career roles with uh, in the corporate space and we do coaching around all kinds of things. Look at oh, that. So this is happening at the uh, brunch comedy show. That looks so good. I know. Oh, right? yeah. I'm ready <laughs> That's <to> amazing. <laughs> There's a menu. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, so because I do coaching with um, women of color, I, yeah. I find it's really important to, to call out the both elements of it. That, um, Doctora brings in the fact that I am Latina, it's that it brings in that Spanish kind of yeah, flair, sure. but then also calls out as a woman, yeah. you know, this is something that I've achieved and it's important. To okay. me I wish that American, I'm sorry, I wish that uh, English, American, I don't even know how to say that, um, we had that for American doctors, like the distinction. Mm -hmm. well, you have to do, this whole thing has to, uh, I think it has to do with a little bit of subversive, a little bit of suppression. Yeah, that, you know? I sure. mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that's what it is, but... You can kind of think about that, you know, in a, in a long way, where it's like, why do we not? 
create the female for this particular title. You yeah, know what sure. I mean? Sure. I mean, our society's been dominated by men for so long, so it makes sense that it's been suppressed for so long. I thought about that. Yeah. I thought about that as we were going to do the episode. Yeah. I go, what is that? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there's, I mean, I just kind of thought about Why it. Why is that? Like, how did it, did it naturally happen? Oh, of course. You know I know exactly mean? how it happened. Okay, we got some it's, theories. It's, it's all theories. Yeah, yeah, of course. Everybody's going to have some. That has but, the gender. Oh, for know, sure. Language, that's, right? that's why yeah. Latin cultures are so inclusive I feel or at least more open to things different things um, but it goes back to caveman days in the very caveman very days, very okay. beginning in the very beginning we in the very beginning in the beginning <laughs> before the dinosaurs I like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're the very, very beginning, beginning. for sure we're, we're regressing <laughs> we're, we're going back we need, we're, and we're digging up dinosaurs too so it's like we're kind of going that way um, but it was all it was all physical back in the day, uh-huh. right? Okay, okay, we yeah, dominated yeah, sure. because we had to, because yeah. we we're physically stronger. So we needed to fight. We needed to. Males, yeah, we males. needed to kill the enemy yeah, and, sure, and yeah, all yeah. this yeah. stuff. But hunt, go hunt, as, go hunt. As we exactly the hunting, all the that, hunting. But as the intellect came up and the uh-huh. need for aggression went down. Sure, sure, sure. We're even. Ah. <laughs> you know, we're we're all humans here. Thank oh man, you. that is wow. a small. Wow, <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, that's a small. That's what he Wonderful. said, right? Yeah. Okay, that's intriguing to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was not thinking that it was going to be small. Look at this. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Great. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, I was not thinking. I was going to take a cut. And this can be good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're gonna need to go back. I'm hoping they're now. gonna like they're gonna be paying attention to us in the comedy show and not enjoying this food. So, like, I mean, I'm like, man, this is gonna be too much. It's like <laughs> sensory overload, man. Typically with wings, so I know. Typically with wings, it's like which one, which flavor. Now how to determine the size. I don't know. Go for the Dude, what are they feeding these chickens? Look how oh, huge wow, those are. are. That is awesome. All right, cool. Well, no, by, by the way, we started talking about Eleme Latina. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's go back over there. Let's go back there. <laughs> That's where we originally yes, started. Yes, 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 yes. Right? yes. So, Eleme Latina, about, yeah. so um, coaching, leadership yes. coaching, leadership development for Latinas and women of color in corporate America. Oh, corporate America. Oh, but you specifically like the thought of corporate America. May I, I do. Ask why? Why I why do. corporate America? So, well, I ask the question. And, and specifically, I work a lot with people who are in mid-senior level um, positions because there is so much less support for people in that space. So mm. as a um, as an educated Latina, somebody who is going who has gone through university and yeah. like I say, you right, some of that there experience. are some resources for uh, first gen college students or people who are come from minority communities and going into college. Mm. But once you graduate, yeah. yes Google, right? There's no okay. first gen in the workplace, yeah. whatever. Um, but we know that what we have seen is that Latinos and people of color work really hard, they get recognized, they get yeah. promoted to a certain place, yeah. and then they stall out because oh, really? once you get into those mid-level roles and sometimes into those senior, yeah. early senior level roles, yeah. people don't get promoted anymore because the pipeline gets even thinner mm-hmm. and um, you know more narrow, there's fewer positions and the disparity becomes yeah. much more significant at that level, right? So th- there's a lot less resources, there's a lot less people who um, look like you, who you can go to for advice, mentoring, I mean, whatever. Something that I've learned lately is that it's a, it's a hard road up whenever it you're trying to, hey, and it, it's kind of cutthroat. It is. It <laughs> Without is. calling it cutthroat, but, you know, it's competitive. It's competitive. It's competitive. It's competitive. It's competitive. It's competitive. And it, it becomes an environment where you have to feel like you have to fit in, right? So you have to sure. change who you are to be in Is it kind space. of, does it feel like there's cliques in oh, a way? Absolutely. Right, when mm. it gets to a certain level? Absolutely. Right, so it's hard to penetrate those groups if you're not inclusive or if you don't feel like you're inclusive yeah. or they include you in any sort of, even, even like the mini conversations. Uh, I was in the corporate world. And I remember that they would say, for instance, the meeting is at 8, okay? So I get there at like 7.50, 7.45. They were already there at 7.15. And I'm like, hey, guys. And they're, and they're like, oh, we've already covered this and that, but let's jump into it. And I'm like, well, uh, I thought the meeting was at 8. Oh, but we went to breakfast. We did this. And we went we to go get coffee. Day, yeah. It's like this little group yeah. thing that I had no idea existed. And yeah. they already did half my stuff. And I get in there and I'm like, so what do you feel about this? We've already decided this. And I dropped my two cents and it's already too late. So how does someone break through that? How does someone challenge that dynamic? There's a lot that goes into it. So it is a lot about becoming, you know, creating your brand and being known for certain things, right? Yeah. As you work hard, you get to really set that precedence of what people expect from you. Yeah. Um, so that comes early on from the hard work and the things that you do. Okay. But the other piece of it is really understanding how to build your network. Because yeah. that network in 
Latinos. Make your own here. click. Make your own we click. Huge relationship people, right? We come from a very community oriented culture. Sure. We hang out and tell stories, but people in corporate America, the way that we have been groomed to create those relationships, it feels too social. Like you're hanging out and you're talking to somebody and it's you know, it's less strategic and less intentional. Sure, sure. Because sure. you're building relationships with everybody. Gotcha. Whatever. Wow. Um, but you have to be really intentional about what that looks like. I mean and it's not to say like, you know, go out and only use people for what you want. It has to be a two way thing. Sure. But be intentional about how you're building relationships, about how you're really expanding your network to people who can get things done and people who can help you with the strategic direction of where you yeah. need to go with your career, right? Gotcha. Or where you're Some looking to go, to yeah, go. depending yeah. on the situation, yeah. Because pivoting is uh, kind of tough, you know, especially Absolutely. if you are up at a particular level, you know, like, oh, you're going to switch direction or no, I'm too late. There could be a strategy for you to keep moving up yeah. that, that, you're not, that you haven't seen because you don't have experience. And experience. it's even like the lingo. Like, for instance, the day that we met, I don't even remember this conversation, but when we met, so tell the folks how we met, Melanie. I don't know, like, tell me about that conversation. Yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> I don't want to remember you were, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was at the, uh, I don't want to say around Houston. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Yes, and it was uh, at, An the, event. At, at the event. What was the event, though? It was something, I forgot what the name of the event was. Yeah, um, the DHHC, um, uh, the data. Remember the mayor came yeah, and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was an awesome data. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so anyway, when, when I was meeting you that day, we were chit-chatting, and I said, one of the things that, that, that was hard for me in corporate America was communicating through cliche, right? Oh, so, they'll, right. so they'll say stuff like, um, we're going we're gonna to have a conversation about this, but uh, let's table it. Yeah. And I was always, uh, in my head, I'm like, Table it? What do you mean table it? Like, do we know the table? Like, how do I table it? Like, for me, like, those those little cliches, yeah. those conversations, how does one, I don't want to say to learn that, because I literally, after a while, would just start writing them down, because they'd say stuff, and I had no idea what that meant, and then, you know, it takes two to tango, but two to tango, and then I go, and I go back to my office, and I look it up, oh, two to tango means this, okay, so then I start, like, creating, like, my own vocabulary, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that, I, I'm just, yeah, I mean, that's part of it, right, okay. you get into it, and you have to, like, practice and you know it comes from being in those situations and you have to learn it the other part though is recognizing that there are people out there that can kind of help you with the you know the mentorship and the really guidance around you know where you feel comfortable asking questions yeah. if you don't find the people that you're comfortable yeah. you know in essence a third then, party person that is uninfluenced by other people where you can go hey give me some guidance on this what do you think because yeah influence right so if you you are looking for guidance for inside you don't have you don't you don't know the actual true that's kind of messed up <laughs> you don't know the true intention wow. so you can't go so you have to step outside so i always tell people wow. there's a couple of different levels yeah. of people that you want to know right so you want to definitely have that sphere of people that are going to help you like from a mental perspective like technically this yeah. is how you do x y and z right. like, to help you with your job yeah then you want those people who are more like um more of a, an advisor that can you know help you with your career questions that kind of stuff more of um kind of a you know kind mentor, of a kind, mentor of? kind of thing but more on your career like your the on job yeah. mentor and then yeah. there's a different level where it's more of a sponsor so this is a person that's not necessarily right. talking to you about x y you know kind of the step by step of your career but more like long term yeah somebody at a higher level yeah. that's gonna know you well enough to talk about you when you're not there mm. so somebody who's going to be able to advocate for you when you know an opportunity comes up a project or whatever that might look like it's and you're not going to be around because all of the most important decisions about your career are made when you're not in the room mm. so if somebody is not advocating for you yeah and that's what Latinos, I feel like we, our whole life is like that. Like we are all advocates for each other or like sometimes reverse advocates. Like if I sure, do sure. something awesome, my family, oh, you think you're bad now or what? <laughs> <laughs> so back to the doctor You know, thing. like that's that exactly that's part of it. Piece of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so why? Because, really? because then it becomes like, ¿qué te crees? Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, I'm like, hey, if you have your whatever it is that you want to put in front of your name, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to hear tell you not to do that, Mister. But I think you know, we're slowly. Everybody gets a Mister. Everybody gets a Mister. You get the MR for Mister. I get the oh DRA. That's awesome. Right? You use a Mister. I think we're slowly starting to come around. I mean, it, it used to be at least when I was growing up, it was a lot of that, like no te crees tanto. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, it's it, 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 it's one of those things where. 
uh, you you want to be humble. Yeah. But unfortunately, you're too humble. Somebody else creates somebody else creates a little bit of extra shine, and you don't get the communication. Hey, oh, I'm trying to properly communicate. Oh man, it's, about, it's not about humbling. It's about also showcasing your talents, it right? Is. So you Absolutely. can so so uh, so you can so the value can be uh, kind of seen by other people, so that you can so that they can have like what is you know. And that is one of the things that holds people back the most. Ooh, is that right? This is humble, their humbleness. Yes, their humbleness. Thank How you. intriguing! And this thank is you. the humbleness. Yeah, is something that, well, bad. That's wow, that's that's a lot. Lot. Ooh, man, we're gonna be here a while. Yeah, yeah, do we have enough? Do we have enough? <laughs> There's a perfect. Thank you very much. Awesome. We should have thank enough. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabe. Oh, also, could you do me a huge favor? Uh, do you guys seem to turn down the music just as much? Just because well, I'm not sure how this thing is catching. That would be amazing. Sure. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the things that holds people back because Latinos are definitely we're super humble. A lot of people are raised that way, but. When That's you're intriguing. in the corporate space and you're having a performance conversation with your boss, yeah. he's going to ask you, tell me about what you did within your role yeah. this year. Yeah, but I'm supposed if to be humble. you're being humble, humble you're, you know, a lot of us talk about what we did as a team or, you know, yeah. play down all of the things that you did. And that's not going to help you get a promotion. It's not going to help you get a raise. Yeah. So you have to be able to talk about the things that you were able to do and the impact that that has. Yes. Communicate the impact without showboating. Yes. <laughs> but there, there's a time and a place to showboat. <laughs> yeah. Out right? to show communicate. You, you, you have because, to. Well, because if you don't toot your own horn. No, you're a jerk. Who's no, gonna you're a jerk. Who's <laughs> going to toot for you, right? <laughs> I, I think about a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, he's a he's a professional. He's in Hollywood. He's doing it all, and he'll post pictures of himself with no shirt on, and it looks awesome. With no shirt off. No or shirt on. Right? Okay, so shirtless. You're shirtless, and he looks gotcha. awesome, right? Looks awesome, gotcha. And and people are hating, or people will say things. And and he told me a long time ago. He's like, you know what? The only other person that's going to promote me online and social media and all these things is going to be my manager, and that's it. And my, my mom, but she doesn't know how to do the social media, right? He's like, so, no, she likes so, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. My mom doesn't have that many followers. He's like, so that's why he's that's why I do, he's like I'm humble. He's like it kills me to put this stuff up there. I don't want to. He's like, but I have to because it's his game, right? Yeah. The Hollywood. He has to put his face out there. So that's why it's important to know when to toot your horn, when to be humble, when to fight those battles, when to take it right and that's is that what you help people with yeah absolutely that's beautiful LMA Latinas wow yeah. so speaking of which I'm looking at your website right now <laughs> elevatelatinas.com <laughs> check it out elevatelatinas.com yeah I am I mean well I mean yeah, yeah, right. that's, that's a good that's, thank you for checking that though that's funny I would have been like <laughs> the app has like off and I'm like I'm looking at your uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like my website <laughs> it is so like, I found this doing? really interesting and I, I wanted to find um, uh, ask you more about this okay. uh, a statistic show that 76 percent of Latinos repress parts of their personas in the yes. workplace. Whoa. So first, where, did, where is that statistic from? Like, where is that study so from? So there is a study, um, and I'll give you the link to put Yeah, we'll the, put that link uh, in the description in below. Description. Don't forget, subscribe. And ask me the name of the report. Um, but it um, basically says that, you know, people tend to repress their, their sense of people? self. People? Latinos. Latinos definitely, well... Women and Latinos, especially, Interesting. Uh, repress parts of their persona in the workplace, and part of that is a couple of things, right? As we talked about it at the beginning about that whole assimilation thing, feeling like you have to fit yes. in. So if you think about things like um, here before food, or oh, that's um, a, wow, that was perfect. We did not, so we did not practice that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, want to, you want to do that? I mean, okay. no, you didn't no, see this happen. I, I, I was She was talking, oh. and I just prayed before my food. But oh, she yeah. was in the process of talking about how our cultures uh, do that. I'm humble. I do it internally. I'm humble. Awesome. I do it internally in my mind. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, no but, judgment. Um, I love it. I love it, man. But you know, those types of things. Um, a lot of people try to change their accent, or they change the way they dress. Oh my god, that's a they good one. They take away their mm. big hoop earrings, or, or change right? your name from Jose to Joe on your resume. Yes. Yeah. Um, Wow. And it could, you know, it's a lot of different things. Um, and you know what? That's interesting. Um, I wonder if that happens as you get older, that you get more confidence when you when you switch your name back. Some people do that, some people don't. Me, just because you, know you don't I mean? care because you're older? Because it is your actual name. <laughs> you know? like, hey, why am I going by, by and Jimmy? Like, my name, yeah. my name. The people be calling me. That's not what it says about my name. That's I'm not Billy people. anymore. I'm Guillermo. <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, man. That's Guillermo. In case you don't know, that's William in Spanish. That's Guillermo. Yeah. Which is Billy. So, yeah, this, that repression really, glass I think it, it holds people back. We'll get this chicken first. This idea of, um, you know, feeling comfortable, there's this whole 
conversation now. And big, a lot of big companies talk about inclusion, and they talk yeah. about bring your whole self to work, and this idea of authenticity. And really, oh, is that what this is? Like, no, ain't nobody yeah, told me that. Bring your whole self to work. It is. It's, it's, it's a new. It's a lot. Like, people are. Yeah, yeah I haven't heard that before. People have, uh, you know. This is amazing. Well, I think you know, there's big corporations are really pushing for. DEI because it is such a it's like so popular right now. Like it's, I, I do it's agree with that. I well, I also think that there's also kind of more corporations, more people starting businesses. So there, so that allows for you to be. You know what? If I can be me here, I'm gonna go me me. Try to be oh, me yeah. over here, or, or filling as many gaps so that I can yeah. fill that gap and be myself. You know. Yeah. So I think a little bit of that is happening. So yeah. D, I think DEI has been kind of up and coming over the last. What's probably, DEI? What is that? Yeah, diversity, equity, inclusion. Diversity, it's been coming. Inclusion. It's been up and coming in like a bigger conversation probably over the last five, ten years. Yeah. Okay. But companies have been doing a lot of talking the talk without actually doing anything behind it, right? So there's a lot of push for if you're going to put it in your value statement or if you're going to put it on your website. How are you changing policy within the company to reflect and actually do the things that you're saying? You put it in there for two years. Then you got to make it happen, right? Well, wow. yeah, well, here, well, you have to measure to see if it's happening based yeah. on what you write. Mm, so, mm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were like agreeing with me. Oh no, no you're I'm enjoying all those. All right, I am right, right? I never agree. Right. And I'm like, I'm not hungry. Yeah, well, like, you gotta, good, so. Again, the company at that point has to prove their value and go, hey, we did have this voter proposition. This is where things were. I know it says it, and this is where things are. You know? Yeah. So implementing those little steps actually does help you look look back and, and feel like there's progression with regards to. Is a company molding to what the, uh, what, what the so consumer the, needs, what, what, what the people that work they need, and things of that nature. I think it has a, it's kind of a double-edged sword though, right? Because yeah, sure. people will say, if you don't have the uh, metrics in place, then you don't know that you're doing good. But also, yeah. a metric like that is definitely a long-term one, right? You're not going to see the change right away. And if you do, it's probably for show. Mm. So for example, if you... If you see companies who are, I know everybody smile. So everybody smile. Let's let's promote this person into this role and check the box. But one of the conversations that that I think it needs to happen is if you put a person in the seat and you don't let them have a voice, then you're not doing anything Boom. to change the conversation. Right? Boom. They come in and they they preach the same thing that the you know cisgender white male before them was having then. They're not bringing. You're not. They're not open to bringing their own perspective and their own. This is voice. like this. You're absolutely right. Okay. This is like the the Rooney Rule in the NFL. Okay, mm. so the Rooney Rule in the NFL is a rule they've come up with to hire more um, non Caucasian um, head coaches. Oh, head coaches. Head coaches. Really? Oh, kind of like there's um, two non-white coaches right now. Oh, wow. Texans have one of them. Wow. Actually, no, we just got rid of him. But. Um, that's a different story. But the point is, the Rooney Rule was established so that before you hire, let's say you're an NFL team yeah. and you just fired your coach, you need a new coach. Yeah. Before you can even interview other white coaches, you have to interview a black coach. Mm. Like there's these rules set. So here's what they did, just like you were saying, they did it for show. Mm. Because it that rule was instituted maybe five, ten years ago yeah. and it still hasn't changed. So what's the difference? Yeah. They found out. Here's what's happening. I signed it off. I, I got my two interviews in. Even worse than that. Oh, even worse. <laughs> the, the the black coaches who did interview for these jobs mm -hmm. are now suing the NFL. Oh, okay. because they have they have documentation, email, text, con like all kinds of documentation to prove yeah. Yeah. that the white owners were purposely derailing these interviews. Mm. So the black coach would come for the interview. They yeah. show up drunk. They show up late. They'd be like, yeah, okay, what do you got? Okay, whatever. And then they'd text the, the white coach, hey, we just interviewed someone, but you got the job. You know, like, completely, wow. completely shade. And it was just so they could keep that, that fake. So they could check hey, the box. Yeah, we checked the box. We're doing, this is a new rule we've established. It's called the Rooney Rule. And they don't even do it. So now that this lawsuit has come up, it's going to change the way maybe that that rule has been yeah. written, maybe the way that other corporate America is going to be able to interview people before yeah. they can interview whatever they're looking for. I, I find that so, um, because the NFL is a multi-billion dollar corporation, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of uh, trickle-down economics when it comes to how they run their business. Yeah. Um, because it has such a huge impact. Right. right. Yeah. The way that they um, profit, the players that they profit from, from yeah. are not represented in the... Right. In, 
It's uh, 88 percent black in the NFL, and it's like 0.01 percent um, in, in coaching. So it's like, wait, these guys know exactly everything there is to know about this game, but we hire the other guys. We have never played it. Like what? Yeah, that's where it is. Um, I want to go back to what you said about the the personas, right? So 76 percent of Latinos regress parts of their persona. So yeah. is that part like also, well, I'm thinking, I think extreme. Yeah, I'm a comedian, I always think extreme. So like, would that mean like in a, let's say a pure Latino business, we're gonna have the walls painted red and chihuahuas running around and you, you know what I mean? Cool. Like yeah. where, where can I, like this happened to me. Mm-hmm. I would be jamming some hardcore Mexican music in my office, okay, okay, okay. and they come in. I'm like, <laughs> and, you know, I'm trying to turn it off. Yeah, 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 yeah. but it had been another. What if it's a Latino? Uh, it was a, a gym that I worked at. I was the fitness oh, yeah. director. Okay. And if a fellow what, Latino, what did you have on? What did you have on? Like, do you remember the band and what you were playing? Oh yeah, it was like, uh, Rosas, the La, La Mafia song. Oh, really? Un million de rosas. I'm black. Yeah. Yeah. You remember his plan? Yeah. 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 Y
skiing yeah, 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 yeah. on my yacht. And, you know, those I just are not conversations that we <laughs> have. I just went to Cabo. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. When we were just little kids, remember in summer school, our, like all my white friends would have all these like, exotic vacations. Like, what did you do? I went to, went to Mexico. <laughs> That's it. That's our vacation. I just stayed with my grandma. We drove to yeah. Mexico. Like, not even, like, they put me to work out there, too. I was selling chiclets. Yeah. Like, we're going to Austin. <laughs> we're going to San Antonio. Oh, nice. Yeah, that counts. Kind of. That's pretty much yeah, Mexico. Counts a little bit. <laughs> we would go to right. Mexico it used to be at the and we about. would um, pick pomegranates up in the orchard. Oh, nice. We used to go to, uh, when I was a kid, we used to go to Monterrey, mm-hmm. and uh, my, my uncle would take us up to the mountains. Yeah. Did, did you know there's wild chihuahuas in the mountains of Monterrey? Oh, is that right? Little bitty chihuahuas? Little tiny baby. Yeah, like, at a time. Like this That's big. True. Wild little chihuahuas. And they just run around with <laughs> thousands of them. Okay. So my uncle every, would always tell us, he gave us a hundred dollar bill if we can catch one. Because it's Whoa. impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> and even if you do, they're... Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're no. They're vicious. And then it's not worth all the money. No, it's not. No. But it was fun, though. As kids, chasing those. Okay. So... We're talking about Element Latinas mm-hmm. and the corporate world, and we ended up with miniature chihuahuas in Mexico. That's, That's part of it. That's how it is. But this, you know, if you were in a corporate space, would you be comfortable having that conversation? Heck no. And, you know, talking about to the miniature chihuahuas that he hunted when he was a kid. This summer and was chasing chihuahuas in the mountains. No, you wouldn't tell them that. No. That was, some people wouldn't, you know, share that story because it's not a. It's not something that they a lot of people feel comfortable sharing oh. because they feel either embarrassed or like it doesn't fit within the context of gotcha. you know this level of professionalism or whatever that is. Oh, right? so. gotcha. Hey, keep your conversation sharp in here. We're paying you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I mean, um, también, you know, there are some companies now have employee resource groups or yeah. ne- employee networks where oh. um, you know around certain affinities. So like they have an a, a, a Hispanic employee group or Latino employee group, whatever. Yeah. Um, that try to have some of those conversations with. I think those are great um, as long as they are set up in a way that has real conversations and it's not just like a culture celebration, right? Like it's more than just single and mile mm, and, yeah. you know, Taco Tuesday. If, if it's an employee group that's having a real conversation about things like what are your recruiting practices and how what are you your recruiting people? practices Wednesday? <laughs> what are you right. Yeah, so I mean, like changing the conversation. If you have a a, a diversity group within the company, yeah. you know, making sure those groups are able to voice their concerns, um, to to look at things like where are we recruiting? What no, kind of but it just sounds like it's, 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 that takes a lot of work. It yeah, is a lot. It's it a, is lot a lot of effort work. because people, it's like you're mixing different cultures, and so as your company grows. Kind of have to define how we're going to treat our employees, how we're going to, and then is this working with regards to our office? I, I would say that's kind of challenging. I see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, how about between puzzle. between Latinos? This is something that, that Roberto and I were talking about the other day. How how is it that we all speak Spanish, right? We're all most of us Catholic, right? We all have we all do the same things, eat the same. We all eat the same rice. God, you know, like. But there's all these little tiny countries. We all want to be our own entity. If we could somehow combine all of Latin America into one country, we'd be the biggest country in the world. Yeah. However, yeah. everybody wants their own thing. And then yeah. there's all these like corruptions within yeah. all these in between and politics. You, you could call that a humongous situation with regards to corporate uh, climbing and all that. Just the, sure. the political environment. And could, you could put that as one big corporation. But it's where- it trickles. It, it's a Spanish speaking yes. corporation that was taken over by. You know what I'm saying? But it trickles down even to us yeah. today. Sure. Like you and I were talking about the other day. Yeah. Like we have friends that we had back in the day yes. that we don't associate as much more anymore. Mm-hmm. However, we're all really smart, outgoing, good looking, like pumped up Latinos with awesome. our businesses. Thank Perfect. You. Thank, Thank you, you, my man. I appreciate it very much. Um, but for some reason, we all want to have our own businesses. Yeah. If, it, if we could somehow... Well, it's not about having... Right? It's, about the, it's about the collaborating yeah. strategy, which we're, this is, this is, this is what's happening. That's the whole point. It's a collaborating strategy, you know? That it is endless resources we shouldn't be arguing. You know right. what I mean? There is right. competition, but you shouldn't be arguing about, oh, hey, no, 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 no. Texas in itself is, has humongous resources. The world in itself has humongous resources. Mm-hmm. We should I mean, be helping each other. That's yeah, the way I see it. There are bigger and cats is, trying to squash everybody. <laughs> They're like, hey, why are we not working together? Yeah. Right. That's, you know, that's definitely like this whole competitive nature. They, there's a one of those sayings around like crabs trying to climb over each other. Yes. A bunch of crabs in a crabs bucket. Crabs in a bucket. 
Yep, and they try to climb over each other. That happens. That Fair tends problem. to happen. That's what Latinos are, right? It can be, and we need to change that perspective because there is so much opportunity. There's so many Latinos within the world. Right. We are the upcoming majority within yeah. um, the United States for sure. Mm. The, cha- the demographic is changing, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I do elevate Latinas is because oh, okay. if you really think about it, yeah, right, the population is changing. Yeah. The pipeline is changing, mm. so people, more people going into university, more people coming into corporate America mm. in general, uh, into the workplace in general, but mm. also within corporate the corporate spaces. Yeah. And the representation absolutely needs to change within the boardroom. Yeah. There is less than 1% of Latinas in C-suite positions in, around the world. Wow, around the world, around not the United world. States. Well, I mean, obviously not within the, well, I would say Latinas as well within Latin American countries, yeah. but still. In the United States, less than 1% for sure. Um, less than 4% of Latinos in general see some positions um, in the United States. Wow. So given the number, knowing that we are going to be the majority over the next few years, that representation really has to change. Because, I mean, if you think about how we are having conversations about the marketplace that these companies are marketing to, right? the um, decisions that are being made about the employee population, all of these things really impact what we're doing. We are we are becoming the majority also changes our buying power, right? We spend more money, especially, um, you know, we spend a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, especially Latinas, because women tend to be uh, the money spenders in the household. Women oh, be I shopping. Know. Well, women be shopping. Women be that's the medical because they're running right the stuff. household, right? It's, we're spending the money because we were making. We have to deal with the household. Yeah, right, right, right. So, yeah, right. for sure. Yeah, I, that's definitely something that we uh, have constant communication about. Uh, how much I should not say anything about how the money is spent because it's getting spent <laughs> in the household. <laughs> hey, oh, how much? Though? No, I'm just, I'm just asking. Just asking. Just a well, question. Just curious. <laughs> it was just, I was just wondering how much. Are you? <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter. That's that. Don't ask. You know, man. You know, man. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, which is, yeah, it, it's definitely a, a pattern that I do see as well. So, how do you think someone who doesn't have a support system, doesn't have a group, doesn't have a, their, their business doesn't have a, a social um, or a, a human resource person that they feel comfortable talking to, how does someone who doesn't have anything, who is getting into a corporate America on their own, kind of feel comfortable? Yeah. That's basically what you do. Yeah, so that is what I do. That's, um, you know, having the conversations with people. I do um, one-on-one coaching, and I also do group coaching. So one-on-one coaching a lot with people who are in those more senior-level roles trying to get into um, senior-level or C-suite type of positions and um, talking about how to represent yourself, how to self-advocate, how to change your mindset from being the doer to being the more strategic thinker and, you know, a lot of different conversations like that. Um, I also do more group coaching around where, you know, for people who are, don't know where to start yep. and they need to, you know, just have a group of people to, who are familiar with the, the kind of things that they're going through. And it's more of a structured, uh, semi-structured, I would say, um, conversations around, like, we pick a topic and we're going to talk about how do we give feedback this week or, yeah. you know, how do we deal with people who are microaggressions within the workplace and, you know, all of those kinds of things. Microaggressions. Yeah. Urgh. Yeah. <laughs> That's the know. Chihuahua thing. <laughs> the Chihuahua. The Chihuahua. They exist in the corporate world. Micro, absolutely. Micro they absolutely. They in Mexico, do. they exist as little dogs. In the mountains. In the mountains. In, in corporate America, they micro exist as their little look. It's all those things that make you <laughs> feel uncomfortable. <laughs> How do you catch a microaggression? You can't. You can't. <laughs> He's gonna offer you a hundred dollars, and you can't. You can't. Oh, man. That's awesome. That's well, yeah, and you can't. You can't piss people off enough. I mean, the more that you <laughs> yes, them, the, the more, they, more they, they growl at you. All right, the more they piss people yeah, yeah, off, yeah. and then you know it just wow. messes with people's. What a crazy um, analogy. It's it messes awesome. with people's ability to do their work right. That's because right. Because you have a portion you of your mind. People, you don't. You know. You have a portion of your mind that's equated to us. Uh, yeah, it <laughs> I mean, do you want to work with somebody? Who's no, like, no, no. Depending, I mean, depending. Are they delivering? Are they, they delivering? I mean, that's a good question. Are they delivering? I do like two hours. They're cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they're delivering in the microwave, you know what? You grab them all you want to. You keep putting the paper in. Down. <laughs> I actually saw one of your uh, PowerPoint presentations. I didn't have time to watch all of them, but it was really informative. And I love how 
Uh, this is something, again, the li- I feel like the little things in corporate America are what Latinas, Latinos in general don't know about. And I had to learn, for instance. Like, for instance, we used to always do a presentation at yeah. the, the fitness um, wellness center. I had to do, you know, about stretching, flexibility, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. And at the beginning of every uh, PowerPoint presentation in the conference room, mm-hmm. they have a special walkthrough and signs and everything and sign ups and sheets and everything. Yeah. And they wanted me to play music as okay. people are walking in. Yeah. So what do I play? Mana. Oh. You know? Me vale, vale, vale. Me vale todo. So I'm playing Mana and, and, and people are walking in and I see them just like walking in like that. Like, what the hell are we walking into? You want me to just awesome songs? I saw one translate. lady go in and go back out, like through the back. And I was just like, that's interesting. So I do my thing and then afterwards my GM told me. He's like, hey, you know, um, that, that, that was an amazing presentation. He says, but I think that maybe the music at the beginning maybe threw some people off. And, and I was just like, I spent so much time and effort researching, putting that pres- presentation together, and I get thrown under the bus with a damn Perfect. intro song. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, what do I play, man? And he goes, Journey. <laughs> <laughs> Always go, you go with Journey every time. This feeling. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But see, little things like that. Or, or for instance, how we're eating right now. Yeah. Right. Like, I had to learn in corporate America that if I have a chicken wing like that, I covered it with my napkin. I covered it with my napkin. I'm gonna knife. Chicken out. You let me chicken out. Like, oh no, oh, it's rude. But, but if we were all in a, if let's say we were all Somebody GMs of a Latino <laughs> corporation, <laughs> man, it'd be all over, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But little was, things, right? The whole thing I was trying to give a little bit of that to you. You're welcome. This whole thing was to share. A little bit of all of that. A little bit of all of that. Sure. Like, oh, I don't want to. You know, you know what? I'm gonna eat in front of you. Planned it all. Because <laughs> I should have questioned. I'm doing it from this guy. Should have questioned. Let me eat. I love it. And I'm still talking. That's why I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I know. I know. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, so, you know what? You're super brave. You oh. you came in this. And oh, you know, yeah. we were not, I had no idea what was happening. Yeah. But this is good. This is good. This is good stuff. Yeah. So I love having conversations with people because it's just. This is the real stuff, right? You talk about it and it's real life. That's right. That's I, right. It's another real. thing that I like to tell people is like, exactly. so leadership development is, you know, if you get lucky, you get picked to go to one of those classes and yeah. you're like, you're going to a, I don't know, whatever, high potential, whatever class. Okay. Right? <laughs> but they, what they're teaching you <laughs> no, is so generic. Oh, yeah. Is that right? That it's just like, here's the 10,000 foot level of how to give feedback or, you know, whatever, how to have difficult conversations. How to have difficult, what's a, diff- a difficult conversation? Yeah. What do you like, mean? How do you, um, how do you, if you have employees, how yeah. do you give uh, bad performance reviews? Oh, okay. Or in a letter. If you, yeah. <laughs> you mail it. Just, or if you, you tell your neighbor agree, to tell it, hey, send them the letter. If you don't agree with your boss <laughs> yeah. and you want to tell your boss that they're wrong, well, you know, how do you go about doing that? Okay. So you go to these classes and they have these generic things that they teach you because leadership development is pretty universal, right? Okay, it's okay. very Western yeah. based. Okay. Sure, sure. They kind of teach you all the same things. Yeah. But then you have to really... I really like to have conversations with people about how do you make that fit for you because being a Latino... Yeah. There's this whole thing around hierarchy, right? You don't talk back to your parents, oh, so no. how are you going to go talk back to your boss? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The humbleness situation. Yeah. Oh, you know, as I was, I was discussing, uh, there were two things about, there was uh, the humbleness conversation. Um, I wonder that humbleness scenario or the whole, hey, be humble and, and, and don't showboat for two reasons. In my thought process is one, when you showboat, some people are not going to like you. So, of course. Right? So, uh, but I want to say, don't be humble completely because then it, then you could become, um, what was the word? Uh, uh, style? Well, yeah, when, in the sense that, hey, hey, you should be humble. I, I'll boast. You be quiet about what you did. I'm going to go ahead and tell it for you. That's my job. I'll like, be, I, I won't be, I will you mean not like people be, in their places? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You, 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 you yeah. I will say yeah. exactly how it went down in my version. You yeah. need to be humble. You, I, I'll, I'll do you humble. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's a little bit of both, and we can, nobody ever communicated like, you don't have to be completely wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just straight up be humble. Yeah, yeah, no. You know what there I mean? There is, uh, you're right. It wasn't communicated. I mean, they didn't tell you how to flip the switch. <laughs> yes, right? exactly. There is to be humble unless. So there's a couple boom, ways I tell people straight up to think about that. One is when you talk about the things that you're able to do and the things that you've done, the impact that that's had, mm-hmm. you're able to share with that person how you're helping them. Because a lot of Latinas come from this sure. position of service, right? Being very helpful, mm-hmm. wanting to be this community yeah. kind of whatever type of person that's help, being helpful. 
being able to communicate the impact that you're doing within your job is yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about how you're helping your company or how you're helping your boss right, look right, good right. or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So you need to be able to share that. The other side of it is really around um, just shifting this dynamic of I'm um, not necessarily being humble, but I need to be grateful for what I have. Yeah. So like right, right, right. I, when I was you know working whatever position I got to, and I, there was a point where I was making four or five times what my parents made, right? Yeah. I'm like I was the definition of successful, but going in for a promotion and asking for more money it's like how yeah. can you be asking for more you already have so much like this like how are you being ungrateful like right? this wow. I earned it <laughs> wow. there, you know there it. has to be a, a shift of perspective to think it's not that I don't that I'm being ungrateful it's that I am doing all of the things that my ancestors set me up for right they sacrificed so much yeah. whether that's through immigration cash in all you the work cash that they in. did yeah. you, they're really building that foundation for you to take off and for you to hold yourself back that's, that's, you know, that can be rough. And it's hard for us because we don't have as much to compare it to because yeah. it hasn't been done enough. It has. Right? And that's the whole point. That's what we're trying to do is increase this awareness. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it wasn't until I started having a lot of these conversations that I recognized <laughs> how big the community is. Because it, it's not big enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Which there community? Needs to Latino be or Latinas? La- or just Latinos, Latinos. Colored folks in, in, cor- in general? In corporate spaces. Okay. In leadership positions. Oh. Um, around the world, right? Right. or definitely within the United States, there's a um, there's a lot of organizations that look at what corporate um, Hispanic uh, representation looks like. So there's a there's a group called um, We All Are All Human. It is the We looks Are at, All Human. We yeah. Are All Human, okay. and right. it looks at statistics of um, nothingness within the corporate spaces, and they do a lot of the research behind like what is like all the surveys that look at the actual data of emotion rates the you know number of people in certain positions the type of people in different industries all of that stuff um, and they have this awesome toolkit that you can use for things like equal payday or you know all of these other things so do they have, i'm sure they have a website you know it have a website oh, okay. yeah, we are all human.com we are all human.com it's it's gonna be in the link, in the link. We'll subscribe don't forget to subscribe, well. subscribe. Um, another really good one is i said so it's the I hispanic uh, hispanic association for corporate responsibility okay they look more at things like policy so companies big companies like pepsi and chevron yep. and you know Toyota, everybody, right? They do the surveys with the companies themselves around actual policy. What are you doing to, for promotion rates? What are you doing for recruitment? What are you doing for, um, you know, cultural uh, policies within a representation around religion and things like that within your organization? What do employee networks look like for you? Hmm. All of those things to really talk about what is the fundamental of how are you setting your employees up for success? Wow. But, those things are like, if you don't know, you don't know. And as Latinos coming into a space where we don't have a lot of people to look up to. Exactly. And we're so focused on doing a good job that it's uh, oftentimes it's hard for people to take a step back and look up and look around. See the big gotcha. picture, right? Yeah. I have a sort of racy question. Racy? This just kid, this just jumped in my head. Not, race, not racist. <laughs> racy. Racy. Um, sure. Do y'all, do y'all think that, that Latinos are more easily corrupted? Corrupted? Corrupted when they get to a certain level. Oh, easy? Easy, oh. easier. Here's my, here, let me give you an example. Sure. Okay, so my example is, is um, okay, so my dad, he's uh, president of the Farm Workers Union in California. He okay. represents like something like 50 million um, farm workers. Sure. So anytime p- politicians want votes, yeah. right, they hit him up, right? So um, my dad also was a teamster. Um, he worked with Cesar Chavez. Oh, wow. I mean, I my dad has been in the game for a long time. So awesome. long story short. There was a mayor of Los Angeles. His name was his last name was Villaraigosa. I don't remember his first name, but I remember Villaraigosa. My dad was so excited about this guy. This Latino is going to be the next president. This guy is sharp. This yeah. guy is out, I mean, outgoing. Yeah. He says the things he needs to say yeah. around corporate America. Yeah. Like he knows the game. Blah 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 blah. Ends up gets to a certain level. Yeah. And gets a lot of money and gets a lot of clout. Ends up just becoming this horrible person, womanizing, gambling, gotcha. partying, hardcore, destroyed his political career. Yeah. No one knows where he's at now. Gotcha. Right? So my dad was the one he said, Man, this happens to us all the time. Yeah. We get us someone, someone super great, yeah. we start pumping him and something with corruption happens, whether it's women or yeah. drugs or I, that's a money. great question. I don't think it has to uh, where where like how how does that happen? Where does that happen? 
happen, and why does that happen to us so much as Latinos? That's a good question. Um, I can't say I can give you a direct answer to that, but I will say that I think a lot of it has to do with the, you know you're coming into. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, a whole new world, right? These are things sure, that and that's we why. haven't had exposure to. Yeah. And the other piece that we talked about earlier is you're changing your persona to fit into the environment that you're in, right? Yeah. If you want to be, if you want to run with the cool kids, you got to do what the cool kids are doing. Yeah. What a great POV. Well, because right as you mentioned, right? Um, that's so it's good. a startup position. It's like, hey, you start here all nice and nice and gravy and all we're all friends but the system in itself that he's trying to get into and infiltrate it's already potentially a corrupted system you know what i'm saying oh it so is. you're saying the corruption was already there you're and right he did yeah your buddy wasn't your, your, your dad's buddy didn't go in there like oh right. hey i'm um, gonna go do this no, no, they were like right. congratulations here's your bag of coke it's a steeping little process of hey what's up yeah we're friends we talked about this earlier right so people change their persona to fit into the environment they're in they get put into these boxes and then they get given this script of here's what you're going to say yeah and so if you don't stray away from that and stand it within your own ground and, and have the actual conversation from your yeah. own perspective, you're not changing the diversity. Wow. Well, one of the, that's I, a great, I, I, that's a great, I, I, great point. I, I, great I, point. I, a big thing is the support level, right? In the sense that, okay, support so from, from, from whoever it is that you are working with, with regards to your network. From strategy. the bottom up. I mean, sure, great. Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would assume it has to be continuous. Okay. Meaning, okay, hey, we're a particular. I'm at a particular level with regards to have some form of influence, right? But I still really can't do anything uh, because I need to decide. Other, I mean, um, I need to convince other people, and they're actually trying to convince me. They all trying to convince me, and people are gonna look at you like, yeah, right. No, I'm serious. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I need y'all to do actually more, which means I need you guys to hit their constituents and get ah. Because that's the nature of, of the situation. I've correct. I've moved up into a level of like, yeah, ah, but the guy that I was that I took place for is also corrupted. They were corrupted, and I'm trying to corrupt me. Oh my god! Yeah, dude. that's right. That's right. So you so got. It's, yeah, the, right. it's the process in, in itself that's the problem. When it gets to a particular level, wow. like, I mean, you see it happening in every, almost, I mean, everywhere really. Yeah. You just don't. Uh, there's so much news. You just can't catch all of yeah. it. There's and, so I much mean, news. That I, I would say it definitely depends on the person, right? How how strong can you stand with yeah. your integrity? Exactly. How strong can you be within your own value set? And that's yeah. that's why this whole conversation about you know leadership conversations are generic. If you can't make it specific to you and what works for you and yeah. how you can make it feel real then you're faking it in that environment that you're in. If you're doing it generic the way that they're telling you to, then you're gonna follow the script in everything that you're doing. So when they tell you, this is what the decision-making process looks like. Yeah. As Latinos, we are very, again, a very collective kind of environment, yeah. so we're gonna be more around, let's build consensus. But you can't necessarily do that all the time. Yeah. You need Especially to when there's four people, or two yeah. people. <laughs> um, ah! Send the 12 in. Or, you know, you give feedback. Well, I'm not gonna give my boss feedback. Well, you really have to, because you have to, you know, whatever. So just, but you have to do it in ways that make it feel comfortable and authentic to who you are. Wow. And that's why it's so important to have that support system, right? Because if you go into it, like me, I'm a perfect example. I had no idea what corporate America was like when I went into it. And I had to learn on the fly. And if there's so many things that I could have done if I would have known ahead of time, I could yeah. have saved myself a lot of heartache yeah. and time there's, and money. There's a bunch of unwritten rules. Every time we go into oh. this new, uh, new little pocket of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of, of people, of corporations, or little pocket, there's little unwritten rules that have been set up. You know, it's really hard to catch. Oh them. man, you, you just said something that was really hot on Sports Center today. Sports Center today, yes. Today, you so they're talking about the brawl. There was a huge brawl, yeah, yeah, about it, yeah. Yeah. right? And so the, the a um, a black NFL player, he's yeah. on the, the Sports Center, and he made a beautiful point. Okay, why is there so many unwritten rules in these white sports? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's not any in the black sports. Okay, okay, okay. If that had been a brawl in the NBA, yeah, there would have been cops. Oh yeah, there would have been. I mean, it would have been just a melee, but not only does it happen in those sports and there's so many unwritten rules, mm -hmm. for some reason they, they don't exist in these other sports, yeah. how did that even happen? I mean, it happens because it, oh, it, it, man. people allow it to happen. It's just, wake up, call, wake even, up, But call. even hockey, they allow them to fight. <laughs> little, little wake up, call. Imagine, imagine, yes, imagine if the NBA, they allowed fighting? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, oh my God, man, it would be an awesome game, though. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm not, I'm not advocating that. I'm not advocating that. Not advocating that. <laughs> but it's just it's just fascinating the way corporate America has kind of twisted and manipulated the way they want particular things to work. And, yeah, and then we, is, we kind of, of flow because we want to be in that game, right? Yeah. That's part of it too. As yeah. Latinos, we want to, we want those things. I want that house. I want that car. And this is part of that. This is I, I think this strategy that we're that we're developing, the, the the message that we're trying to convey is that along with all these powerhouses, all these uh, uh, big folks that people are uh, paying attention to, they get their attention drawn out, and it's like, hey, hey, there's a lot with regards to what can be done in the local environment. There's a lot of professionals. Stop looking up so high. Start developing your local network, your area, your situation, what you can control. That's where I'm at. Yes. You know what I mean? I see all this terrible news about things that are happening. It's not out of my control. Yeah. Like, like I can't control a lot of the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah the voting situation. But how do I get altered and just drive my mind about something that there is nothing nearly that you're going to be able to do? Yeah, yeah for sure. And so I think, you know, within Houston, there's a lot of opportunity mm. to, to expand your network. Right? Yes. So we, we talked about um, yeah. the, the session that we went to for Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, right. you know, that that's a great place, especially yeah. the data one. I think they had so much good information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we ended up here awesome. doing this. Exactly. Um, the other one great is the you know, Hispanic Professional Network. They yes. always do great events. They have a recruitment event coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do they? Okay, There's cool. a new network coming into Houston oh. called the the Houston Latino Network, okay. which is, I just saw the invitation, like, yeah. web, um, email for it. Like, it's okay. brand new, just starting. All right, cool. There's also um, La, uh, the Latino Professional Network, and yeah. it has a bunch of different branches. So yeah. the Latina Professional Network, the Latinx Pro professional network that are you can access all that through the same website yeah uh, okay. yes okay okay cool um, and they all have separate websites too but you yeah. can also get start it from there and yeah. Kind of yeah. trickle in okay um so a lot of those you know have local chapters where you yeah. can just meet people and network and yeah. get outside of your comfort zone but get outside of your comfort zone yes. um and even though you know, I, always, I keep saying Latinos are a very community relationship building type of people. Sure, we sure. definitely are. Yeah, but yeah. there are also introverted people yeah. who don't necessarily like to go to those kinds of things sure. and spend a lot of energy on it. So yeah. there's ways that you can do, be intentional about those things too and sure. try to get um, to meet people more one on one or whatever. Yeah. So whatever works for you. Lots of opportunity. This Saturday, an event on July 2nd, that's an opportunity for you to come, network, have a good time. Watch entertainers, people that, that are that are in business with us, with uh, the premium advantage, are going to be here. So there's a lot of opportunity for engagement. You know, it's so one of the things that we're looking for is engagement. Click on the links below. You'll find the link uh, for Elevate Latinas. Uh, you find the link for Jacinto. So you, if you need to uh, do a booking, do have some questions, it's an easy way to connect. Yeah. An easy, yeah. simple way to click up a button and you connect it. You know, gives you the opportunities as opposed to other uh, mediums that you can no way of connection is the, the entire spectrum of the communication is sit here and watch me and then uh, that's it yeah. more along the lines of hey here you can sit watch enjoy hopefully get a little bit of information I learned a lot with, yeah. with regards to today Absolutely. you know what I mean uh, so we're hoping that the audience learn a little bit too. So. Um, what else? What other information you guys would you guys like to share before we close out and you know kind of uh, leave it as a closing note for our, for our audience and things like that? So I was just to go box. Right, so I was just looking at her her Instagram. Um, yeah. It's Elevate Latinos on Instagram. ElevateLatinos.com, obviously. Okay. Um, I have a question here. Uh, you have um, on your bio empowering uh, driven Latinas and WOC women of color. Women of color. Yeah. Thank you for that. What is it says here that you crush imposter syndrome? Ooh, what is so imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome. So is that, you know that feeling of crush it. like you don't belong. Okay. Sure. And so imposter syndrome shows up a lot of different ways for a lot of different people, right? It could be I have to be perfect at everything I do before I do anything. Yeah. That's one thing. Or it could be I have to be involved in everything because mm. I need everybody to know that. I'm, I'm here already. to help. Wow. Yeah. Or it could be, um, you know, I just feeling like I can't speak up because I don't know enough in order to share my opinion. Yeah. Wow. Like a lot of people, it shows up a lot of different ways, but it's all about, you know, feeling like I'm not good enough to be in the, the place that I'm in. Okay. The, the doctora thing, right? Like, I finished with my damn PhD, <laughs> but I, I, you know, I go to damn conferences PhD. and I'm still like, why? How did I get here? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, this sure. is so weird. Like, yeah, yeah. There, nobody looks like me. How do I? Yeah. How am I really here? You earned it. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yes. You earned it. Right. Uh, that's what happens. So, you know, you know, yes. we, we talk about imposter syndrome. We talk about navigating careers. So, and and being really um, thoughtful about what kind of career you want to have. We talk about um, things like you know. 
finding spaces where you feel like you belong, finding yeah. sponsors and advocates, you know, gotcha. so connecting you, you with people that um, you can that can help you with whatever it is that you want to do. I like it. I like it. I, I from the moment that we that we met, we had this conversation. I thought, man, yeah. this is a super good value yeah, that folks that can watch so that they can connect. Know that there's a resource out there that is local, that is not outside of your reach. Right. As a matter of fact, when we finish this, we're going to have a little bit of conversation. I'm going to introduce uh, to you a little bit of our membership to see if we can somehow create access for our members to Elevate Latinas. It would be awesome if we could create, because we have female members, you know what I mean? So be, if we could create that streamlined solution is what we're about. Saving time, saving money, uh, doing things at the same time so that uh, uh, we don't have to do them again. Yep. Yep. Like-minded individuals need to stick yep. together. Uh, and remember, folks, that e even if you don't necessarily want to book an appointment, um, you can get started right away. There's boot camps, yes. right? So I'm looking at your, yes. your Instagram. There's boot camps. Um, there's webinars. There's yeah. Zoom meetings. Um, there's yep. tons okay. of information. All of her, a bunch of PowerPoint presentations yeah. on her yeah. website. Yeah. Um, so the idea is to provide resources, exactly. right? Oh, so, maybe a collaborative web webinar or something along this yeah. lines. So yeah. we can do. The challenges of social media is something that I, oh, the power, the challenges Maybe of we could media. raffle off a free session. Yeah, with, yeah, if, yeah. If it's, if it's, if it's, Oh, okay, okay. Oh, we have to hit. We have to hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do have that. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, oh, okay, sweet. Okay. So that just happened, folks. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Welcome. You're welcome. So make sure you subscribe. Thing, so I also, I'm also on LinkedIn. So if you okay, need, yeah, if you for sure. Find me on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Rodriguez, PhD. Yes. Um, I will okay. link that as well. So okay. yeah, we're gonna put uh, your website here on the on the links yep. information. Yeah. But uh, so also some webinars for the uh, webinars. LinkedIn. There's a Facebook. Um, Wow, there's so much information here. This is yeah. great, and then That's you can you can leave a message to start communicating yeah, yeah, yeah. with Doctora Rodriguez. Doctora. Did you know? <laughs> did you know <laughs> that Rodriguez is the number one name in America now? Wow! Congratulations! We, we, we passed. We passed Smith. <laughs> Smith. Wow! Smith was the number one name in America no forever. So now, now, if, it's you, now if you want to just tell people some name that they can't find you, you're no more Mr. Smith. Oh, Mr. Señor Rodriguez. If you find my <laughs> if you find my dead body on the street, <laughs> I'm not John Doe. <laughs> It would be Joe John Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Well, thank, thank you for having me. Sure, thank, thank you, you very much for being here, taking thank the time. You. It was awesome. We're going to spread out the information. I'll share yes. with you the link, and then uh, we'll stay in touch. Yeah, cool. Awesome. See you guys. Thank you.